some stops and take a trip down on my block. On. Where you see hidden potential, young minds sharper than pencil. Like. And ain't afraid to speak their mind if they got something against you. Nope. We standing with you, we tackle issues like civic pride. Nope. Hate will cease to exist, let's put our differences aside. Damn. From my side to your side, from Dutch Town to South Side, from Pim Rose to North Side, from Benton Park to Old North, know. the West End to West Side. We bless when we step out, we stand down, rise up, stand together, wise up. This is Stitch Cast Studio, produced by St. Louis Story Stitchers in St. Louis, Missouri. Welcome to another edition of Stitch Cast Studio. This youth discussion is titled Gender Roles. Our Stitch Cast alumni will tap into the misconceptions and the age old traditions of gender roles regarding what society says a man should do in a relationship as well as a woman. Check it out. They say who that, but you already knew that. That beat them story stitches, story stitches, story stitches, story stitches, story stitches. Hello, hello, everybody. Under the sound of my voice, thank you for tuning in to yet another episode of Stitch Cast Studio. I am your host, Brandon Lewis, and I am accompanied by a few members of our Stitch Cast. Now, ladies and gentlemen, today we thought we thought it'd be kind of cool to talk about some gender roles with the world rapidly changing as society and society's expectations, the rapidly changing, and even uh, the definitions of the word gender as we know it changing and adjusting. Uh, we wanted to get into some gender roles or how we feel about them, what they might be rooted in, the ones that we like, the ones we don't like, and we're just gonna have we just gonna we just gonna dive into a deep conversation about it. So that being said, let's hop right into it, y'all. How do y'all feel about gender roles uh, as far as uh, like generally, not about specific gender roles yet? We are gonna get there, but how do y'all feel about gender roles all together? I personally feel like men should be set in stone. I feel like gender roles is something that should be like addressed whenever the time is appropriate. And like you decide on who does what it, when the time comes to decide. I feel you. So, 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 what I'm hearing is you, you, you're okay with gender roles, just not exactly how people execute or expect them sometimes. Exactly. Like I feel like nothing should be. Oh, this is how it's supposed to be. I feel like people should be able to do whatever they want to do. Most of, most of. I feel like the idea of gender roles can tend to uh, tie down society. And if there was like a, a, a specific infrastructure, it could actually help progress us. But the current idea of it alone is just like too underdeveloped. I feel that. Um, gender roles, I feel like they are something that society plays up. It makes it so that we have to kind of basically fall into what we think are our norms of being. We can't decide for ourselves who we want to be. And they oftentimes control our thoughts and feelings and emotions as humans because of who we were assigned at birth. Um, similar to what Chris was saying, I think, uh, I definitely think that gender roles are outdated, at least the way that we, at least the way that we portray them now is outdated. I don't think that they're necessarily a bad thing. It's uh, like, to me, to me, I look at them as like, 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 you know how when, when you, when you play basketball, right? Basketball, basketball is, is five players on the court on your team, man. Each of them has a specific position. Each of them has a specific job to do based on what their skill level is, what they good at doing or whatever. You know what I'm saying? If you're a good passer, then, then then your job is to get the ball to the point guard or whatever the case is. You know what I'm saying? And if I'm wrong, then I apologize. I don't play basketball. But, uh, you know what I'm saying? So don't don't be on my head about that. But uh, that's kind of how I look at gender roles. So like it's uh, certain things that it makes sense for, for me to do those specific jobs because I'm more equipped to do those jobs uh same thing for whoever i end up dating uh she may be more equipped to do jobs that i'm not quite as equipped for like carrying a baby or something i don't know but uh that being said uh yeah i think i think it's some goods and bads to it uh what do you what do you what are some gender roles that y'all would like to do away with that y'all feel like shouldn't still be a thing um you just like you were just talking about basketball that's actually one of the main things that people like you say girls shouldn't play where they look at them like as less as less feminine as other girls who play like volleyball or something like that and i feel like that's not right i feel like girls should be able to play whatever sport they're able to play most whatever they want to play most of 100 percent. yeah i agree with that too and it, it's kind of it's kind of surprising that we that we do that that we that we feel like like a girl shouldn't play football or whatever the case was yo if you, if you got some broad shoulders and, and can run somebody over then you probably need to be on a football court like like that that, that makes Makes sense to me. So uh yeah, it's it's kinda weird that we play into that. Typical stuff, like the woman should be in the kitchen cooking and the man is the person to take out the trash and mow the lawn. We need to do away with the gender norms that tell us that we can't be self sufficient in every way possible. Most of yeah, that's a that's a good point. Because I uh if you live on your like if you live alone, like like 
Like, like, what you gonna not watch dishes? What you gonna not take the trash out? What, what you do? What you think somebody of the opposite gender gonna fall out the sky to do that part for you? So yeah, I definitely, I definitely feel that. What about the rest of us? I feel like the gender roles really don't matter to me. Like, if I want to cook, I'm a cook. If he want to take out the trash, he can take out the trash. But if he want to cook some dinner, go ahead and make me some dinner then. And if I see that trash can full, I'm going to take it out. I ain't got time for that kitchen to be sneaking. You know, trash be if trash and flies and stuff, but I'm going to wait for somebody to come take out the trash. No, if it's full, if I just if I just put some old food in the trash can, I'm going to go take the trash out. Right. Oh, man, I can't stand when people put, like, and it's a little off topic, but I can't stand when people put, like, parachute food in a fresh bag like I just put this bag in the trash can and you gonna put some spoiled food in it you realize that now means we gotta take this fresh bag out even though it's not full do you realize that a pack yeah, at that point you might as well just take the pot to the trash can and dump it in there I'm saying or something put it in a grocery bag or something you know what I'm saying like like bro like we're going through all these trash bags you know what I'm saying that's a whole nother that's a whole, let, let, let me not get into tangents and all that okay so what's 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 a uh what's a gender role that you're glad is in place that, that you that you would like to follow so this is not a gender role but it's like my own personal feelings i like gender energy like the manly energy like men carry because i believe like energy is balanced it's a yin and a yang thing but i believe something that we shouldn't do away with is men's power to be like in their manliness and woman's power to be in a womanliness even though I feel like you have that balance I think that's sexy when you can live in your own presence of your gender energy maybe yeah I feel it's like the separation between masculine and feminine energy that's real most of uh, me personally, uh, it may not necessarily be uh, still considered a gender role nowadays, considering uh, the situations that go on. The uh, the role that you know a, a male should uh, protect and a woman uh, nurtures, like that's real. Like it, it also ties into the whole uh, masculine and feminine energy situation. Like there, there's there's a lot of times where you you you'll need like a, a female's feminine energy, like her her to nurture versus the the uh, the, the structured logic that that we create in our own minds. I was just about to say that, like, I feel like one of the main roles is, like, a male protecting the female. Like, you know, I feel like by fo- like all, we already considered stronger and females are considered smarter. So it's, like, normal for a man to be able to protect the female. I feel that most of Now, one of the videos that I was watching, uh, one of the videos, and I think Aaron, I think we watched this video together, actually, that we were watching in preparation for the podcast was well it wasn't more about it wasn't about gender roles it was about men's rights activists versus feminists but uh but a few of the feminists were actually offended at the idea of a man protecting a woman so uh let me ask the ladies that are present here are y'all is that something that y'all are offended by or 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 how how do you how do y'all feel about the idea of of a man being a protector and a woman being a nurturer i feel as if they're kind of the same thing they're just different when you're talking about a gender because a nurturer protects point blank period anytime you want to nurture someone you're protecting how they feel you're protecting if they are safe or not you're making them feel vulnerable in the way that they feel like they're safe with you you're protecting them women can you know women can handle themselves they don't need a man but i think it's the idea of when you say you don't need a man men think that they aren't worthy wanting a man and needing a man are two different things i mean obviously a woman needs a man for certain things like child making and stuff like that um but wanting a man is more so wanting him to just be there in his presence for you wanting him to be equally yoked with you i think that's um women don't never need nothing men don't ever need nothing but we're we're the yang to the yang so we need we want each other we should want each other so I'm saying. I'm actually glad you just said that because that brings me to uh, something I want to touch on. Just because you can do something doesn't mean a that that's the way that it should be done, and b that that's the route that you need to take. That that's the best route to take. Uh, for example, I do hear a lot of women talk about how they don't need a man and all of that good stuff. I uh, and, uh we can get into later what I think that's rooted in, but. Like, I do hear a lot of women say, like, I don't, I don't need a man to raise my kid or whatever the case is. I can raise my kid on my own. Yeah, okay, you can. 
but why though? Like, like does that does that just because you can do it does that mean that that's the best way to go about it or that that's the best way to do it? I think uh, both of y'all said, or uh, maybe it was Rissa. Somebody spoke earlier about balance, about uh, you know what I'm saying, balance. And as as a man that was raised by a woman, my mama did a beautiful job raising me. She did an excellent job raising me. Yet and still, I definitely see areas in my life where I would have benefited from having a regular male presence in my household. Uh, and that's not to say that she did anything wrong. That's to say that she's just one piece of the puzzle. She's just one parent. You know what I'm saying? And to, to me, like that, to me, that that's what I think about when I think of the whole nurturer and protecting uh, thing. To protect someone is in a, in a way to nurture them, and to nurture someone is in a way to protect them. But I think I think the approach is a little different or whatever like uh traditionally speaking uh the male is usually like the disciplinarian or whatever you know what i'm saying the male is the one that do the yelling and then the mother comes behind to comfort the kids you know what i'm saying like it's all good y'all are okay y'all made a mistake y'all had to be punished about it you know what i'm saying or whatever the case is so so it's a balance you know what i'm saying things things work best when working together how do y'all feel about that uh and this is this is a little bit off the way of uh gender roles but do things work better when we're working together or or do you feel or do you buy into the whole i I don't need the other gender to 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 make this happen i would say like the genders were made for a reason point blank period and then opposites attract so most people want their opposite i'm not saying their opposite gender they want somebody the opposite of them but sometimes there's a need of something else like like the question you guys asked before but like when you guys were just talking about how a male protects the woman and a woman nurtures the male perfectly fine and i'm i'm overprotective i'm really overprotective but i've always craved the male protection it's just a craving it's just what it is it's not something i need it's something that i want that will make life better i feel that 100 percent, and i think we desire to t- to protect our lady or our family you know what i'm saying like like that's something that we want so that's that's like the it's, it's like a puzzle piece you know what i'm saying it's not to say you did you did you this frail little thing that can't defend yourself if i'm not around you know what I'm saying? It's, it's, just a, it's just a puzzle piece uh type situation you know what i'm saying like like we you have a inner desire to be protected and we have an inner desire to protect if that makes sense. Hey, everybody, you know what time it is. It's time for our Pick the City Up art interlude featuring our youth guitarist, Alexis Burke. Check it out. on gender roles changed uh, as you grow older. You know what is so funny? I was having this conversation with myself a couple hours ago, and I discovered that a lot of times men, like the energy of men and the energy of women, it's a lot of blame, shame, and guilt to each other. Like, I feel like we hate each other and we don't want to work with each other. We don't want to love one another because there's a lot of things Like, for example, men oftentimes use kind of like their maleness to kind of like get women, but they don't realize that it's like their nurturing and loving and caring side that really is most attractive. But then like women 
I feel like um, a lot of times men, they look at women like, oh, you're supposed to be like frail and nice and like just be there for me. But then when they kind of see a woman who's kind of like basically not living up to that standard of what they want in her own power, it kind of just like it's a turn off. So I think ultimately we need to learn to be balances to each other and not just kind of always seek out this you know, this fight, you know what I'm saying? Like it's not women and men and gender roles really just represent a fight to want to be loved. Most definitely. No, I, I, I agree with that. So like the, re- the reality is, it's like w- once you, once you tear down the, the mindset that like, uh, like, like with the whole, with the whole, uh, a, a man being too over masculine, like you have, you have to tear down that wall. You have to, you have to be okay with being vulnerable. Cause like the reality is like, like, forgive me if I'm getting too deep with it. Cause you, you know how I give you like the, re- the reality is, is that, that it really stems from, from the, the, the basic foundation of taking the man out of the household. It, it, it creates, that, that that stigma where men aren't needed but in reality that that balance is not not only craved it's a necessity for both parties like that's just fact like rather a person wants to be vulnerable enough to accept that it is kind of the the case that changes everything because like at the end of the day like un- unless like you have like a specific type of uh, belief or whatnot against this like you you quite literally need the opposite in like you're, you're not just gonna get through life uh, in a, a specific way without uh, encountering that type of balance in your life because it's literally needed you, you, there's you can't say oh yeah you you get through this and like you have no support system none of that like re- reality like as a guy Guy, we we had our, our male support system kind of trash g that's just facts i i didn't have i didn't have bros that like and seen seen me go through like some of my harshest like oh yeah it's all good bro like that that's not support versus right. having having the female there it's like oh you we we get it i understand what we gonna do how can we get get to the, the solution you know what i'm saying like like have, having somebody there to actually tear down that that masculinity is what is what is needed just as uh well as someone to tear down that femininity like you it, it, it's it's a literal balance it's needed most of yeah I feel as a male's closest friend is usually a female and the female's closest friend is usually a male. I learned this lesson from my uncle because we were, I was talking about how one of my closest friends was a male and he was like, that makes sense. Even in relationships, sometimes your closest friend is the person you're in a relationship with. Sometimes it's not. Sometimes your closest friend is the opposite gender because that opposite gender creates that balance that you need in life. And it's not all always on a sexual manner and it's not always on oh I live with him he lives with her it's sometimes it's literally just we need each other in different ways than we always than we assume most definitely 100% why do y'all think we have this uh kind of uh there's like this this tension between males and females especially during the summertime like 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 hot 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 boy summer hot girl summer whatever they call it it's like like it's literally like a competition to see which gender can do the other the dirtiest so, so opposite, i said because we're opposites and we're mammals opposite opposites beef opposites track just like in any other mammal life the male fights a male for a female or a female fights a female for a male or sometimes they just see each other and hook up it's just it's it's what happens in the male. It's what happens in the ma- mammal mind. I feel like a, a, a large portion of it is fabricated, fabricated, to be honest with you. A lot of people feel a certain type of way based on what they see on social media, what their friends tell them. And like, it, it'll naturally conflict with some of the people you meet in your life. Like you get, you'll get told by your, by your friends who are like single that like a lot of what you do in your relationship, a lot of the uh, types of people you meet are the types of people you want to be around. Then whole time you'll see them doing exactly what they tell you not to do. Like it's, it's, it's a it's 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 way too opinionated now for people to really want to be themselves and it's a lot harder that tension to be gone when everything that created that tension is still uh here here today like everything i think uh, i think a lot of stuff like that come from what people go through in relationships or previous relationships that they've been in i feel like that make them look at males like that make females look at males period a certain type of way or the other way around I just feel like it go off of like the experiences with people. Most definitely, yeah, a hundred percent, hundred percent. So, how have y'all uh, views on gender roles changed since y'all have grown up versus what y'all used to feel like when y'all was younger? I was gonna say uh, um, a prime evidence of that the gender roles need to be updated is the concept of pink and blue. Like, first off, pink not even a coat. Let's start there. Pink is not a color. Pink is a shade of red, which is a boy color in the in the mental mindset. And 
in society, red is a boy's color, but pink is not a color. It's a shade of red. So how come pink is a girl color? It's a shade of red. It's not even a shade. Shade is darker, so it's a tint of red. Right. I'll put it this way. When I was younger, I was um, I was in a place where I didn't have to think about gender roles. Like, when you get older, gender roles start to take shape in your life. Like, I don't even think you know your private parts when you're younger. You don't know this is what this is, and you're not developed yet, so it don't mean nothing to nobody around you. Gender roles as a kid is kind of ambiguous. Like, you just can be anything. You could like blue, red, whatever. Nobody questions it until you get older and they start labeling you. But they do take place in, like, children because, like, for example, when the little boy starts playing with the Barbie dolls, people start saying, oh, that's not right. And then he starts to learn, oh, that's not right. And then he has to then decide if he still wants to play with them Barbie dolls, what does that mean for his gender role as a man? I feel that. And you know what? I was one of them. I would uh, play with uh, wrestling action figures a lot. And when my girl cousins would ask me to play with them, they would give me the male Barbie dolls. And granted, I would do with them the same thing I was doing with the male action figures. I would make them fight each other, but 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 people would still like like my older cousin would still come in, Brandon playing with Barbie dolls. You know what I'm saying? Like 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 that was definitely a thing. And so they they kind of ingrained in me that dudes don't play with Barbie dolls, I guess. But yeah, just stuff like that. Like like it was certain like action, certain certain like girl shows and boy shows that we believed in or whatever the case is. You know what I'm saying? The boys like the superhero stuff, and then the girls like stuff like uh, wasn't Bratz the show? I think Bratz. Like, but like the uh, usually what it would all boil down to was the girls like the shows that mainly featured girls. And the boys like the shows that mainly feature boys because we can see ourselves in our respective characters. Uh, I think where we went wrong was saying that, that that dudes couldn't like the girl shows or girls couldn't like the dude shows. And uh, I think a lot of that was rooted in uh, homophobia, us being scared that like a, uh, that a dude liking some girl stuff would grow into him liking dudes or whatever the case was, and so on and so forth. Obviously, now that I'm older, I understand that that's not how things work. You know what I'm saying? I'm not going to I'm not gonna automatically start liking uh, uh, boys just because I saw some boys kiss on the show or whatever the case is, whatever, whatever, whatever it may be. So yeah, that's one of the things that I definitely see is different. Uh, what about y'all? I was going to say, I feel similar to what you said about the Barbie dolls and the action dolls because my brothers had extra dolls and I had Barbie dolls, but we did the same thing. I ain't even gonna fake it. I might have made my Barbie doll go up a flight of stairs, but I still made them dolls fight. All they did was fight. <laughs> and then when my brothers came over there, my brothers most definitely took my Ken doll and made my Ken doll fault with some doll that I made called Roger because because my other doll went to a party. Right. And, but I was the only girl, so my brothers always adapted to doing female things with me because because I never had a female companion to do stuff with. Right, right. I always did male things with my brothers because my brothers was like, okay, so we finna go do this. So I guess when I was younger, my parents didn't do that. They didn't separate me and my brothers because it was me. It was always me, my brothers, and my cousin. It's just what it was. It was me, my girl cousin, one girl cousin, and all the boys. So when it came to boy and girl things, we all did everything together because we never, we didn't like being separated. So when me and my cousins was playing with dogs, my boy cousins and my brothers came in there and they played with us. They might have had their action figures or they had a boy doll or they or they had a girl and they was pretending like they was the girl and fighting one of the boys. We played together and we didn't use gender roles as a thing because back then when it was us, it was about having fun. <laughs> I feel you. Yeah, that's definitely uh, something that, like, I, I don't think we were conscious of as we're younger. We might say things like, oh, that's for girls, oh, that's for boys. But we're not conscious of the fact that those are gender roles that are being, you know, kind of ingrained in us, I guess, by older people. Yeah, I definitely agree with that statement. Basically, it's dealing with, like, making a stallion. And... You know, because black people, they have a lot of stuff against them telling them what gender roles they fall into just specifically because of their energy. And so I'm thinking about men. Oftentimes, it seems like black men feel like they have to be overly aggressive to have some type of um, manly energy. And then women feel like they have to be overly sensual to feel like 
a woman, you know what I'm saying? Like black women, a lot of times like the Megan Thee Stallion, the, the masculine energy, I've heard a lot of men say like, oh, you know, that's a man thing, you know, but I don't really believe in that. And it's like, what do y'all think about women with aggression and men who act more sensitive? Do you think that has something to do rooted in like your own personal gender roles within your, yourself? So I can't speak for everybody, but I know that in black culture specifically, uh, A, we're mainly raised by women, and B, uh, we're reprimanded for expressing ourselves in any way that isn't considered, like, aggressive or, or angry or whatever the case is, you know what I'm saying? So uh, so I know that when I was younger, especially by my uh, female cousins, whenever I would cry or something, uh, you, you acting like a little girl. You being a little girl, you know what I'm saying? So, so, so we were, a lot of us were kind of trained that being sensitive wasn't okay, you know what I'm saying? And then we become adults and all of a sudden women is telling us that it's okay to be sensitive, but they, that they want us to be sensitive. Well, we've been told our whole life by women not to be sensitive. Don't do this, don't do that. You know what I'm saying? You're supposed to be firm, you're supposed to be strong. You're not supposed to cry, even when you say, even when everything in you is telling you that you should be crying right now. You're supposed to, you know what I'm saying, press that, you're supposed to, you know what I'm saying, hold that in and, and keep the facade or whatever, you know what I'm saying? And so that's what a lot of us was told to do. That's, 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 what, that's how a lot of us was trained. And I feel like that lack of healthy expression is actually, is actually what leads to a lot of like gang violence or whatever the case is, you know what I'm saying? Because we, it, it, it's not considered okay for us to be like, hey, yo, bro, look, you just did this thing. I don't like it. Made me feel it. T- it made me feel a way. You know what I'm saying? I don't. I don't like that you said this. I don't like that you did this or whatever. You know what I'm saying? And if you do that to another man that was raised not to do that, he gonna laugh in your face. He might even put you in the face because you acting like a punk right now. You know what I'm saying? So, 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 so the whole man should be sensitive thing or whatever. It's it's real new to us. You know what I'm saying? Like, like that. That's that's not what we was told to be. That's that's not how we was told to be. You know what I'm saying? And it makes sense in a way because we growing up in a in a rough harsh world and if you wasn't willing to have some sort of edge or to be so uh confrontational people would take advantage of you you know what i'm saying people would look at you as a target are you it's easy to get over on him i'm about to press him i'm about to try him or whatever the case is you know what i'm saying so so that that uh i say that to answer the whole thing about uh men being sensitive now as far as men seeing other men that are sensitive uh it depends on whether or not you were told that it was okay to express yourself emotionally or not. Now, if you was one of them that was told, yo, hold that in, don't, then, then more than likely you look at the dudes that's expressing them se- that's expressing themselves in sensitive ways as all oh, he being a punk, all oh, he this, all oh, he that. You know what I'm saying? Because that's what you were told. You know what I'm saying? That 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 those are those are the rules of life that you were given. So it's it's it's, it's I don't know. It's, it's like a big flop. You know what I'm saying? Because like I said, now we older, now we grown up, been living this way our whole life, and now all of a sudden is why you won't ever be sensitive? Why don't you find it okay to be vulnerable? And even as adults, uh, some people will uh, we don't feel like it's safe to be vulnerable. You you know what I'm saying? Like, 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 honestly, it's, it's a lot of us that feel like, like, I can't, I can't tell her this. I can't let her see me this way because it might later be used against me. You know what I'm saying? And that, that, that's, and that's, that's a real problem with being vulnerable. You know what I'm saying? The thing about being vulnerable is that you open yourself to be hurt. And, and mothers don't want to do that. You know what I'm saying? Frankly, mother, like, 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 why, why would I want to give you leverage to, to later use against me? That's real. That's real. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that perspective. Honestly, I never heard a man say that. I never heard a man say like, it's hard to be, like <clears throat> I've heard a man say it's hard to be in touch with their emotions, but that is a true battle when you're told as a kid not to have emotions, but then women want you to have emotions when you get older because it makes you feel like, dang, you suppressed something when I was young and then you're telling me I'm not soft enough when I'm old, that that's true. And the nature and the spirit of what we're talking about, I guess I should just share the like, my perspective of the womanly side because that was another thing I was thinking about women kind of having this this you have to be feminine all the time and especially I feel like with black women when we're young we're kind of looked at as like sex symbols and feminism symbols we don't get a chance to find ourselves to discover who we are outside of our sexiness and then when we get older it's like men are telling us we have to be something more than just fragile something more than just sexy something more than just somebody with you know a pretty face and I think that's 
that's a struggle sometimes for the woman because as a kid, you're told you're just a feminine girl who just needs somebody to take care of her, needs somebody to watch after her. And then you become a woman and now it's like, you know, you got to take care of yourself and you don't need no man. And, you know, God forbid, you know, you just out here just trying to do your best. And then when you're raising a son and a daughter on your own, you feel like, dang, how can I not be somewhat masculine when I got all these masculine roles that I have to take on myself? How can I live in my feminine? How can I live as a woman who, you know, embraces her sexy when, you know, men just want sexy on demand, you know? And so it's like, that's real. I feel as if it's both and switched. Okay, so like men are not the only ones who told that they have to be strong all the time. But when somebody when somebody is telling a man that he has to be strong, they're telling him it's because you're a man. And I feel like that's where the gender role is coming up. When somebody tells a female she has to be strong, they be said because you're a woman, you have to be strong. And when someone tells them they have to, a female, they have to show their emotions or be true to their emotions, they tell them it's because of female. Because I'm and I also know most of men that they have they have to be true that people have told them that they have to be true to their emotions because they're a male because they have to be able to connect with other people and they have to be able to listen and be able to cooperate to be able to survive in society i feel like it's it's the concept that we're all getting taught the same lessons but in a different way can you expound upon that like when you say like we all getting taught the same lessons but in a different way what do you mean no i'm just i'm curious Everyone's always telling a man, you can't share your emotions. You can't do this. You can't You can't tell them that they hurt your feelings because you're a man. You know feelings are not supposed to be hurt. But they're also telling females the same exact thing. Oh, you can't cry over this because you're a woman. This happens to women all the time. You can't, you can't, you can't get mad over this because you're a woman. You're supposed to be, you're supposed to, you're supposed to be, you know, strong about this. You're supposed to be able to take this. You're supposed to be able to this, this, and the third. But it's also on the flip flop side when something hurts a man, you're supposed to be nonchalant about this. You're not supposed to get mad. You're not supposed to get sad. You're supposed to let it happen. It's emotions. You're going to have those emotions, but it's just there. It's not something you show. And this is female. You're going to oh, you can't get mad about this because you're a female. If this happened, it's because it happened. I feel that. So, so for the listeners, let me just uh, uh, say this just so that we clear. Nobody, with the exception of nobody, has the authority to give or take away your right to feel anything. Nobody, nobody. So, 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 you you'd be surprised how many people like just kind of need permission to to like cry. You know what I'm saying? They just need somebody to tell them, yo, it's okay, you can cry. You know what I'm saying? And I'm down for that. I think we should continue to tell people like like it's okay to express yourself, but understand that nobody has authority to give or take that away from you in the first place. You know what I'm saying? Like 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 who, whoever took it away from you, they, they didn't have the authority in the first place. So if you any 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 way that you feel, you know what I'm saying? First of all, give yourself permission to feel that whatever that emotion is, you know what I'm saying? And it's 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 a human nature to cry when you sad. You know what I'm saying? That's a that that's a humanly thing. Like dogs get sad, animals get sad. You know what I'm saying? That's a human thing. To deny yourself the the right to feel emotion is to is to is to uh hurt yourself down the line. Like like you might think it don't have no long lasting effects. It does. You're wrong. It definitely has long lasting effects. You know what I'm saying? And then then 10, 15 years later, you wonder why you snapping on everybody or or, or why you got anger issues. You know what I'm saying? It's because, it's because you weren't in an environment where you were allowed to healthily process your emotions and to express those emotions. Not only is processing your emotions important, but expressing those uh, emotions are important as well. So I just wanted to uh, say that for the listeners. Uh, before we uh, wrap up, does anybody have any final thoughts, any final comments y'all would like to say before we close up? Yeah, I just want to say, you know, um, when it comes to gender roles and gender norm, I think we should all be cognizant that they don't define us because we're all just, woman and man, we still have a role to play and we need to find ourselves. Don't get too wrapped up and absorbed in being a man or being a woman or looking like this or looking like that or feeling like this and feeling like that because at the end of the day, I think what really matters is just being a good person. You know, just being a good person, being somebody you like and just being the person that you know people can respect but that you can respect on yourself. 100%. Okay, cool. So I will say this. 
gender roles can be limiting sometimes. You know what I'm saying? If you feel the urge to live outside of what society says to be living, then you should do that. You should do that. You know what I'm saying? Not everybody was meant to mop up a kitchen or to, or to take out trash or whatever the case is. You know what I'm saying? You should, you, should, you should be true to yourself. Be true to who you believe you are. Don't feel bad about not fitting inside of boxes that people try to draw up for you. You know what I'm saying? It is what it is. Uh, and love yourself. Uh, I would also like to say to 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 all of the genders, like yo, can we? Yeah, we need each other. Like like like, regard, regardless of what type of spins we want to put on it, y'all you know say let let's stop let's stop trivializing each other's suffering. Uh, we both go through suffering. We both got privileges. We both we both do this. We both do that. We both played a part in bringing each other down. We both played a part in lifting each other up. So so let's let's stop trying to play this game of which gender is the worst gender or which gender is the reason that the world is messed up and like understand that we need each other. Like it's a balance. It's a balance. If all the males in the world die today, guess what would guess what else would die? The human race. And if all the females died in the world today, guess what would die? The human race. We need each other. Like 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 any way you flip it, we 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 need each other. So let let's chill out. We stronger together. We stronger together. Do you feel like gender roles are defi- are supposed to be defined by the couple or society? Oh, that's a real good question. That's a real good question. Uh, I would definitely say the couple just naturally, like, like, yo, like, like, ain't nobody else in that relationship. Like, it's us. So it doesn't make sense for us to format our relationship to anybody other than the two people that's in it. You know what I'm saying? If this works for us, then who cares if it would work for somebody that's not in the relationship? They can form their relationship however they want to form their relationship. Whatever works for them, that's dope. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's people that it's people that, that cheat on each other and then get back together and be the best couple ever. That's not my type of relationship. That's not my type of relationship at all. I would prefer for us to not do no cheating. But some people, that that's how they buy it or whatever. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, like, no, if, if it make y'all happy and it ain't hurt nobody, what am I to tell y'all not to do it? And same with me, sure. If, if it makes us happy and it ain't hurt nobody for you to tell me that we're not doing it right. Yeah, just honestly, I'm a little half and half on that. I think it's society's responsibility and the couple's responsibility. And I would say it not in the way that you think. Society's responsibility because we have to share with each other our lessons that we learn and our individual relationships on what works for us. And then, you know, it's just your decision to use what you have at society's disposal. Because you can't just say, like, I wouldn't just, like, it'd be irresponsible not to, like, try to better yourself while in a relationship to be a better person in your relationship. But when it comes to gender norms, you really have to just look to society with, like, a pinch of salt. But don't forget that there's a lot of things out there that could help you to really, truly expand who you are as a person in your relationship. I always, I was just talking to somebody not too long ago, and I, t- I told this person, I said to him, look, it don't matter what's going on all over the place or whatever. Your relationship and stuff like that is your private business. The only time people should know about what's going on in your relationship is when you need help, like domestic violence or something like that. That's the only time people should be welcomed into your relationship. Every other time should be deep in, like digging deep to find out what y'all need and what y'all y'all want to get. You got to take everything with a pinch of salt. You can't be looking at society to say, hey, be in my relationship. Tell me how to rule my relationship. But you shouldn't just be like, okay, it don't matter what people say and what people got on their heart because we got to learn from each other, but just keep our business our business. Yeah, 100%. 100%. Does anybody else, uh, anybody else want to chime in before we wrap up? Okay, I had another question. So basically, it's if you feel that gender roles in the, are important, when and when, where, and how, basically? When, where, and how are gender roles important? Yes. Got gotcha. you. So uh, I think the more we talk about it, the more I think that maybe they shouldn't be called gender roles because it's more so like like how, like going back to the uh, basketball thing or whatever, you know what I'm saying? They assign the team roles based off what their strengths are. What, what are you the best at doing? All right, bet. This is what we're going to have you do on the court. This is your best way to serve the team. A couple is a team, you know what I'm saying? So, so, so whatever you the best at doing, that's what you should be doing in the relationship. Whatever I'm better at doing, this is what I should be doing in the relationship. And so, so, and so, so, so uh, going back to the whole thing about protecting, um, I, 
hopefully this don't get taken the wrong way, but I don't think I've ever dated a girl that was more capable of protecting the household than I was physically. Like like if there like if there was a if there was a robbery, if we used to get robbed right now, God forbid, I would be the one expected to jump into action. I would be the one that wants to jump into action. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I don't want her to have to deal with that. So that's that's one of the gender roles that I feel like I think that that's 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 important to me, and I don't see that change regardless of. I mean, if, if I'm dating the Marine, then you got it, baby. Do your thing. You know what I'm saying? Like like if you if you a Navy SEAL or something, you know what I'm saying? Go ahead and do your thing. You're, you're clearly more equipped at this than I am. But uh, in most cases, because of how I'm physically built, you know what I'm saying? I'm 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 six three, like two ten. You know what I'm saying? Like like I just. I have a size advantage over a lot of people, so, so yeah, that that's, that that would that would that would be my answer to that question. What about the rest of y'all? Gender roles is one of those things. It's not a way where and how, but just a um, a blueprint to only what you feel is necessary. I don't think there's anything right or wrong about gender roles. It's just kind of and like this whole gender roles in and of itself is changing. It's changing. Like our um our parents and their parents their gender roles and their norms of how they would do gender is very different than what we think and then what we've fallen into. So it's just really just about taking yourself. Because, you know, I'm, I'm the type of person, I'm anybody going to tell me how to live my life? Anybody going to tell me what to fall into, who to be, how to be? I mean, you just got to do what resonates with you. If it don't resonate with you, then you're probably not doing what, what you feel you should be doing. I question everything, including gender roles. So if I don't think that I should do this or say that or whatever, I'm not going to. Just kind of got to go with the flow. Fire, fire. Uh, I want to thank everybody for, for participating. I think this has been a dope discussion. It's been a dope podcast, so I appreciate all of y'all. Ladies and gentlemen, everyone listening, uh, we hope you found this insightful uh, and ca- uh, educational and uh, maybe even a little entertaining. Uh, if you're wondering how you can become a part of our Stitch Cast Studio family or how you can join Story Stitches in general, if you're just wondering when the next event we have, where the next place we're going to be, all of this information is on our website, storystitches.org. We encourage, we encourage you to go check our website out. We just dropped a new song called Worthy. Uh, uh, it's a great song. It's streaming on all platforms. Music video is, is, is great. Uh, we encourage you to listen to, to listen to that and all the other music we have out. Uh, if you'd like to join our Story Stitches family, we do also have applications on our website at storystitches.org. We also encourage you to follow us on Instagram at Story Stitches as well as Twitter at, you guessed it, Story Stitches. Peace, and we out. Thank you for listening. We want to give a very special shout out to the Stitch Cast Studio sponsors. Story Stitches is supported in part by an award from the National Endowment for the Arts, the Lewis Prize for Music 2021 Accelerator Award. Additional support for Stitch Cast Studio and Story Stitches Youth Programs was provided by the Spirit of St. Louis Women's Fund, City of St. Louis Youth at Risk Crime Prevention Grant of 2021, Lust Corporations, The Charity Pot, and March for Our Lives Aid and Allowance. They say who that, but you already knew that. That beat them story stitches, story stitches, story stitches, story stitches, story stitches.